Page 28. Musical Portraits at Kamenoi Ostro. I don't speak Russian, but that's give you an idea. They have a paragraph up there explaining what this Kamenoi Ostro is and what this music is about. That's kind of interesting. This is just sort of an excerpt of a bunch of stuff that Rubenstein wrote. Meaning it's a medley. A medley is a collection of multiple pieces put together multiple songs or stuff. So a medley, this is three different pieces he wrote out of 24 that that's, the arranger is just stuck together as a medley. And it gets tricky because in a medley, you can time signature change, key signature can change, all kinds of things can change from piece to piece. Here, it isn't doing that. You're staying in 4-4 time throughout, and you're staying in one sharp throughout. Now, whether you're in G major or E minor throughout, I don't know. We have to look at that. But all I can say is at the beginning, it looks like it's starting in E minor, and at the end, you're ending in G major. What it does in the middle, who knows? So let's find out. Right hand first, let's just get the fingering in the notes here. Here, one, two. Lift up, move. Second finger, so we can get thumb. There's a hole on that. I'll come back and talk about that a little bit later, and then go on a different melody. One and two. You're gonna come across. Two. Do it again. One and two. Now, I don't like the idea of crossing over that far. You look at the third line, going in the first measure, you're here to hit the last two notes, here to here. And in the third measure over, you're here. Going into the fourth measure, you're here. I think that's poor fingering. I really do. So let's switch this so we don't have to do that. Third line down, it's here. I'm going to put the thumb on the A. I just skipped a finger. You can actually start it with fourth finger if you wanted. And then come across with fourth finger or third finger, because now you can reach that. You don't have to cross over that far. And then here, thumb on the B on the third measure over. And then you can do a three or a four, either one. And you come down, and you can use thumb on that D and two. That's what I'd recommend. And the last line you're here. And then two five, I like that. And then one four, that's good. I can connect that. And then lift up. Top of page twenty nine. One and two and three and four and just broken chords. And then the second line. Then you come up here. One two three four. One two three. Left little finger. Two. And the third line is the same as the first up there, and the last line is similar to the second. Oh goody. Left hand, what do we have? At the beginning is three and four. Here. One, two, three, four. One, two. If you don't want to put a thumb on that D sharp, then use that. One, and then th one, three. One, three. And you can do a two, three in the last measure of the first line if you want. Or if you want to do that, that's fine too. You decide which fingering you want to do. Second line is similar to that. Let's go to the third line. I'd like to be able to do a 5, 2, 4, 1. The problem is, that's a, you got to have really big hands for that. So the fingering they're showing works fine. You just use thumb on the top one and 5, 4 on the bottom. And the next line, you're here. Five or four, whichever here, and a two five here. This is the last line, second measure on page 28. It's a little awkward here. And the second measure, that last line. I recommend if you can, it's a little tricky. The fingering in the book will work. But you're using the same finger. Mm -hmm. Here, and then a five two, and then just. Just let up on the B, that's your pivot, and you come across. And then you're ready. 
the, there's no real good fingering here that I can see. So you find a fingering that works for you, pencil it in and stick with it. It's based on how big your hand is and how flexible you are and how, how, how much you can cross over. The fingering in the book they're showing. Can do a here and then one four, a five one a four one five one four one that's fine too whatever and then a three and then top of page 29 it calms down. fourth finger there in the third measure for the B fourth finger not third here and then the broken chords in the second measure or second line one two Measure one and two. And Just lift up and move. One, two, three. Put the hands together slowly. Just take this like one hand line at a time and just go over that line until you can get this. Work out the hesitations. And the third line, you're here. Do the best you can. And again, just take it one line at a time and work it out until you get rid of the hesitations. Top of page 29, it's here. You have to go that fast. Fortunately, page 29 falls under the fingers pretty well. It's not so tricky. It's page 28 that's really rough. As far as articulation goes, just follow the slurs. That's really about all there is. Just connect everything as best you can. You can lift up, but between the slurs, it's like a breath, taking a breath. And then the dynamics go to the melody. Moderately loud, whatever you think that is. Keep everything else in the background. tend to come down a little bit because you shape the phrases you come down at the end of the frame. You hang on to that for a modern note a little longer and when I do this with a metronome I'll just double it and hang it two beats instead of one and then we go on. For the third line down this is soft. This down, that's the melody. Every, everything else is very soft. So these, these have to be really soft. Moderately soft in the, at the top of page 29, but this is the melody, which is the left hand. The right hand is very soft. The right hand gets the melody. So forth. And you're staying about there. You got to get it to know it well enough that you could feel these dynamics a little bit. Get into the music. Speed wise, on Dantino, you're starting on Dantino, which is on slower side of the middle somewhere. I don't know what. Maybe you've one, two, three, that's too fast for you. Which, what do you think on Dantino is? It's not fast and it's not a moderato speed. It's not really slow, it's just leisurely. Then when you get to the third line, speed it up a little bit to moderato. Then when you get to the top base 29, back down on Dantino. forth and you stay that way. So really just the last two lines on page 28 are a little faster than the others but it never goes really fast. Then they've added pedal. Well goody. They're just overlapping everything. Okay. I like to hear the rest in the left hand myself but they're doing it this way. If I pedal it the way it's shown this is how it sounds. It's overlapping.
So I'm not pedaling the first and third beat on here because I want to hear the rest in the lift. Going on. So far I'm just pedaling it all the way through. On page 29 again, pedal it all. I'm lifting the pedal with the hands between the phrases, so I hear a little silence between the phrases. I do that out of habit. And that's basically the pedaling. It's pretty straightforward. And I think we can get away with that. The only change I made was in the first two lines on page 28. I don't pedal the first or third beat because I want to hear the rest of it. I want to hear the rest in the left hand. you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'm going to pedal it pretty much like I suggested, which is like it's marked except for the first two lines on page 28. The fermata note, I'm going to hold two counts instead of one. I'm going to take it all the same speed. I can't change the speeds. So let's just try it really, really slowly. We're not performing it. We're just checking notes and rhythms here. I'll give us four counts. One, two, Ready, go.